in three, two, one. What's going on, folks? Welcome to 34 Questions. I'm your host, 34. And tonight, I have a very special guest. This dude I've known since uh, I got out of college. One of the first new friends that I made in my adult life. I'm sure everybody knows you got adult friends out there. Uh, this dude here is a thinker. I know that for sure. Um, for better or for worse, man, this, this guy definitely has his thoughts on what's going on in the world, what's going on with me because he's my friend but also what's going on with himself and i think that's definitely important to have that perspective and introspection especially when you're coming on to 34 questions so welcome to the show my good friend han is in the building how you doing man yeah oh what's going on jen dude we've been talking about this for a minute man i'm glad i'm uh, finally stepping up to the plate yeah, man. Uh, and, you know, I think I told you, but I'll tell you on the show right now. I think because uh, you were like, why the hell haven't you invited me onto the show? I don't think you remember this. This was during the time you were you, you, you were in a state of remembering. And I felt like pretty bad. <laughs> that. <laughs> that's how you really that's how you really felt. And I'm all like uh, I tried to explain it then. But if you don't remember, it was basically because, you know me, man, I've been trying to do a lot of stuff in my life. And, you know, as far as like what's real and what's not may look different to the people that know me and for for this thing i definitely wanted to make it real before i invited you on man um for cause, sure because you see me do a lot of different things that ended up not being as as solid you feel me yeah i'm glad to have you on the show now and i think i think and i hope i'm right but I think mm -hmm. you're the 100th episode, so let's go. Right, right. Let's go. We'll make that happen, dude. Centennial, man. This is when it becomes real. You know, it's like, oh, this guy. Uh, damn, 100 shows. <laughs> like, yeah, let me let me Google him. You know what I mean? That's that's the that's the thing. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, anybody can do a couple of episodes, and you know, I'm I'm definitely guilty of that too. So seeing that you know triple digit type of content delivery that's that's, a, that's incredible for sure man thank you um for the folks out there who are unfamiliar with the flow of the show we do some intro questions some warm-up questions just to set the tone uh through an icebreaker in, the, in there as well just to you know if you're feeling nervous uh hopefully that would help and then after that we'll jump into the main portion where either you choose a number between 1 and 34 or we head over to the big wheel uh, something new that I've added <laughs> to the show. Still trying to find okay. the right name for it, but <laughs> right now all I got is the big wheel. So, <laughs> okay. But yeah, man. The wheel of thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sound the good to you? Wheel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Let's let's do it. Um, I'm ready, bro. All right. Well, my very first question for you, man, is how have you been? Um, I know I probably asked you this last week, but throughout this whole week, this past week, how how have you been, man? I'm um, pretty solid, dude. I just got back from SoCal. Um, you know, I'm I'm kind of living a, a split life in between uh, Northern California and Southern California, and uh, it's it's been you know kind of rough, patchy. You know, moving back and forth, back and forth. But um, I I truly do enjoy the the contrast of both worlds. And I think you know, for the first time in my life, you know, I'm kind of merging the two the two mindsets together. Um, whether it's I'm in SoCal where, you know, I'm trying to bring more introspective conversations with those circles or when I'm up here, you know, I'm bringing a little bit more of that free loving, free care type of, um, you know, vibe when when I do go out with my friends. So I like it, man. California is very unique. And um, I think I'm finally stopping the whole like, oh, now I'm, not, I'm, I'm from the Bay now or, hey, I'm originally from SoCal. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just a California kid. So... I'm with you, man. I, I I feel the same way, even though my my stint in SoCal was only five years. Do you still get people who who any NorCal folks who see you as a SoCal kid, and any SoCal folks that just see you as a a Bay Area person now? Well, that's interesting. Um, I don't think so. I I feel like um. You know, maybe five years ago, yeah, definitely. You know, I, I would try to like see the contrast and the the defined silver lining and the difference between the two places. Uh, but now I think, you know, I, I, I'll tell you this: I'm uh, I, the more time that I spend in SoCal, the more I see the value in uh, 
<clears throat> the orange curtain. I don't know if you've ever heard it, but it's that's like uh, <laughs> that's what they do. You know the the Iron Curtain of China. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, liberals call Orange County the Orange Curtain because <laughs> it's like very conservative. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. And so I, I grew up there. You know, definitely liberal, definitely progressive um, in the late two thousands. And I, you know, I saw my friends, my 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 parents' friends, um, all very conservative. And I kind of shunned it. And when I moved to the Bay, it was great, right? Like it was so freeing. And I said I'd never go back there. There's nothing left for me there. Um, but now, as I get older. I'm picking up the small little values of conservatism um, and I'm not like shunning it. Right. So it's, it's definitely growth. So when I am down there, they do see me as like, I don't know, a liberal cuck, right? Like they, they <laughs> literally think that, right? But like when I come up back up here and I share any sort of ideas, whether it's in like business forming, um, any sort of like loopholes in taxation, you know, they're like, hey, Han, you're spending a little bit too much time with the Republican guys, you know? So maybe that's the only contrast difference. But honestly, um, how I operate now, um, I try to be as well rounded as possible, learning from, you know, two awesome worlds, honestly. For sure, man. Yeah, I think that definitely sounds like a challenge, you know, trying to you you've been exposed and kind of grew up into different mindsets that now as an adult, you are currently, you know, switching back and forth between those mindsets. And, you know, I mean, for it has made you a well more well-rounded person and you know how to navigate through these things. But it sounds a, a little bit stressful. Is, is it ever like a, a problem for you to feel like? to have those both those mindsets and those ideas kind of going through your head um is it challenging for you or is it almost natural now um i i think it's still challenging i don't think i've perfected it at all and you know in the last couple of maybe years i've seen um a little bit of how you know i'm an immigrant here i came here i didn't speak any english and so i felt like i had to adapt quite a bit again and, and i really didn't know who i was right and so now as i'm working with socal and norcal um i'm feeling like ooh, you know who's my audience uh, what can i say and to be honest with you i've i've put my foot in my mouth quite a few times you know in in, in the in different situations and um and i'm always trying to craft my message a little bit better you know understanding like what audiences want to hear and then what i want them to to perceive from my message so it, it's i think it's always going to be a challenge but i do advocate for <clears throat> anyone that i know or anyone who's listening to this to get out of your comfort zone a little bit you know travel um i think the the percentage of americans under 30 um, who have passports have dropped quite a bit and i think that that's going to contribute to a lot of division in coming in the future right if you stay in your your comfy zone quite a bit you don't have opportunities to understand uh, opposing thoughts opposing ideas and you know you, you kind of get locked into this echo chamber so i i think you know that's something that I'm going to, if, if anyone were to listen to this, I'd advocate to like, dude, get out there, be uncomfortable. <clears throat> if you're like a San Franciscan, go to like a super conservative sports bar and, you know, see, see if you can handle the conversations, see if you can finesse it, you know, um, those topics with them and vice versa, you know, um, let's, let's stop with the, like, textbook what is it called cover like judging the cover quite Mm -hmm. a bit you know and categorizing them um i think that's going to be like my my challenge my uh, social challenge for myself in in the coming years yeah it's just get more uncomfortable and then see if i can um kind of link everyone together you know what i mean with being me in the middle you feel me i feel you man (laughs) i feel you uh for sure and uh <clears throat> let's jump into the warm-up questions boom <laughs> okay but uh yeah my first warm-up question for you man is uh what would you like the audience to know about you okay so uh i did watch your videos so i know th- these are just the warm-ups right <laughs> so <laughs> these are just the warm-ups um so i think what I'd like for everyone to know is I am trying to be, I don't want to use the word open-minded, but I'm trying my best to see everyone's perspective, right? So if you can come in um, with more of an educational tone, when, when you meet me or when we, we're, we're conversing, it's going to be so fruitful, 
right? Because that's where I'm trying to come in as. And if, and if I don't, I'd love for anybody to, to, to check me. So I'm not saying that I'm open-minded, but I'm saying that I am aware that is that is something that I'm working on, you know? And yeah, I mean, that's just who I am. Jen, you've known me for years. Um, you've definitely seen the topics that we cover and sometimes I get heated, right? But at the end of the day, once I sleep on it, um, I usually kind of find that center, find the balance. So, not for sure, man. Uh, and yeah, I think one thing that I will say to everyone out there is that even though you are you are passionate about your stance and your opinions, I don't think I've ever known you to be a person who isn't open to 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 new information or to making more of an informed choice. Uh, so. <clears throat> Yeah, I think that's that's definitely something that at least for me, I definitely value in you, you know, it because it helps me too. it helps me not be so one sided. It helps me be more well rounded. It helps me, you know, I think through our conversations, the biggest thing I, as I, I always get because I do enjoy seeing all the perspectives is that <laughs> you've actually done the work and, you know, you're you're just giving me that information and now <laughs> I can understand it, um, which I mean, honestly, I think it helps me be more aware of what's going on um, in different uh, different industries, different topics, uh, just different ideas that, that you always seem to come across. And I just haven't had to take the time to, to either find it for myself or educate myself. So definitely appreciate you, you know, being there teaching me, bro. Like, <laughs> that's what Yo, I think it's a two way street, bro. It's a two way street, you know? And, uh, when, when I first met you, I was definitely like, even, even when I met Frank and all that, I was definitely data driven and like very brutal in business. And, you know, definitely the Bay area softened me up and you were a, a huge contributor of that. Like, you know, very much more of like, Hey, you know, let's be, let, I guess be open. Let's, let's be compassionate. Let's, what do they call it? Lead with compassion or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. like that, that was huge for me. And so, um, yeah, man, I appreciate that a lot, you know, with, without folks like you guys, uh, you, um, even Frank, for example, like, I don't think I would be as well-rounded or like a fucking human being, to be honest. You know what I mean? Uh, I was very much like business money driven. So for sure, man, for sure. I mean, and you know, that's why our energies were brought together to, to help out, help each other out. You feel me? Um, yep. Yep. <laughs> Second question for you, man, is uh Ooh, here we go. If someone were to pay you a tribute, how would you like to be honored? So you know if uh if I was gonna tell myself today I'd do some kind of act in honor of Han, what what could I do for you, man? Now am I dead or <laughs> And, or not, or I'm still like roaming around. Shoot, man, maybe you've just been, uh, you know, in another country for so long, and you know, I just felt like <laughs> was Hans' birthday. Let me let me do something just to send Ooh, energy to you. I, I like that. I like that. If if my birthday was a day to do a tribute, <clears throat> I think I'd go back to um, my original statement, which is like to to be open and like to to challenge yourself, right? So if if it was up to me. It, it'd be one, speak with someone or talk with someone who you wouldn't normally do and find a connection, find something relatable, okay? And then, you know, I have Vietnamese blood in me and we, we're not gonna talk about it too deeply, but like we party quite a bit, mm -hmm. right? So a tribute day for me would be like, all right, let's get a little bit turned, but then let's like really talk about our future. It's really like a big contrast, but I'd like to, to have fun, understand that you are, <clears throat> you know, you, you are just a speck in the, the timeline of, of, of life, right? So you're not that important, but it's still important for you to um, forward whatever this is that we, we call like this fucking um, revolving fucking rock in, in the sky. You know, I want I want to make everyone feel like, hey, even though it's just helping a lady across the street, getting her groceries, whatever it is, you're contributing to the, the forwardness of society and and of, of, of our civilization. So, yeah. <laughs> For sure, man. Oh, now yeah, we yeah, know. yeah. Now we know. Now we know what to do. In, in your <laughs> and, uh, yeah, man. I mean, I'm. I think more and more, and uh, this is gonna sound really hippie, but uh, you know I'm, okay. I'm really believing in energy, you know, and you know how the uh, uh, crystals. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> no, 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 I'm just, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Yeah, 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 yeah. So energy, okay. Well, like, what do you mean? Like radiating energy? Like what, what are you talking about? What do you, what, particularly? I'm thinking of like, you know how, how people's, you know, the scientists out there, they'd be like, uh, matter can't be created or destroyed. It's just there. And like, it just changes mm -hmm. forms, right? Uh, I think that has something to do with it, in, in my opinion. Um, I think energy in the sense of like when someone thinks of you like what is attached to that you know what, what what kind of connotation is that part of you know if if someone was like when you think of i don't know you think of uh your parents there is a certain kind of emotion that comes along with that you know uh, sure versus you think of your your teacher when you were as a kid you know Dif different th sure. emotions are attached so that kind of energy as well and you know, I told you this and it's a pretty corny thing. Like, you know, you watched Avatar the Airbender and like when there's that this scene, is my shit, dude. When like <laughs> minimum five times rewatched, dude. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But you know, Aang standing there, have all the avatars behind him, and like, you know, that's it's like that's his army, right? Or whatever. Yep. Uh, yep. I, man, like lately it's just been feeling like we're, we are those people standing in that circle and everyone is just behind it like all this all this energy but our ancestors mm -hmm. and all the lives that are connected to us through our blood or whatever it just like that that picture just keeps like popping up in my head like more and more and it's weird but it's just like you know maybe it's just making me feel feel good with what i'm doing and um, what i'm trying to accomplish but and yeah man in that sense when i meant <laughs> yeah yeah but yeah. So, and, so did you, do you have a question? <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, oh, no, no. So, what was the question? So no, sometimes I just bring stuff up because it's like, you know, me adding to the sure. conversation. You, you sure. Say something Dude, I'll, I'll, and I'll, I'll add on to it too. Two, two parts to that, right? Um, scientifically, you, you know, well, religiously, spiritually, I, I, you know, I identify as Buddhist because it's easy to consume in Western culture. Um, but v the Vietnamese, you know, my people, especially the Southern Vietnamese, um, we have our version of like paganism, right? Where we, we do believe that there are ancestors, even though our religion says, oh, there's reincarnations and, you know, like, uh, uh, yeah, the next life or whatever it is. But like the true Vietnamese are like, nah, man, my grandpa's right here. We, you know, we, we every, every, every year um, we do a, a, what is an offering a food and we light incense and we invite them back. So if we truly believe that he's reincarnated, then why is he back? Why, why did my mom cook this f full meal? For, for my ancestors to come back, right? So um, spiritually, that's I think that's what I've been connecting more towards. And here, here's the thing, right? So one of my like fifth grade teachers said like, hey, that water you're drinking might be like, hmm. George Washington's piss or some <laughs> shit like that, right? And I'm like, word, right? Like matter does not, it doesn't disappear and you can't create more of it, right? So it's recycled. So when you said that like, um, you know, what if you think of your parents, right? So how do, how do you get that energy? How does your brain get the neurons to shoot? Well, you have to eat something, right? And that cow that I ate this morning is some grass and that grass was probably somebody dead somewhere, you know, thousands of years ago, right? So that energy is recycled. And so, <clears throat> you know we don't have scientific units to measure energy in that sense but if we're talking about like connection yeah of course you know you know what i mean like my ancestors weren't buried in coffins you know we were buried in the ground and we were dissolved into our gardens and so that fruit that i that i've eaten in my grandma's garden probably had a little bit of my great grandfather or somebody in that you you feel me so it, yeah, there is energy. I and, and I'm, I'm going to tell you this now, like as I get a little bit older, um, groups of people that I hang out with, certain groups exude energy that excite me. I don't even know why. We're not doing much. We're not talking much, but I'm just there and I can feel it. Right. And so I think as we get older and more keen to it, as um, the, the noise, you know what I mean? Like, for example, the newest noise right now is social media, right? That as you remove yourself away from the noise, you start to sense these energies a little bit stronger you know what i mean and i think it's going to be there and I th i'm hoping that there's going to be a, a portion of the population um who do feel the energy and you know we we kind of unite a little bit closer it's we're not just get scattered in, in into like the oblivion of society yeah 
I, th- I think it's happening, man. I think it's happening quietly. And uh, I don't think mm. enough, enough people know how to describe it or how to, like, formulate it and maybe not even talk about it uh, within their own yeah. circles. Because, uh, you know, we got people out there who are spreading the awareness, maybe with crystals, maybe with a... Uh, um, with action, you know, we're, we're all manifesting yeah. some kind of energy. Um, so yeah, I, you know, we've talked about it, I, whatever awakening, whatever, uh, renaissance we're going through or is going to happen. I just think we're in the very yeah. early stages of it, uh, which is, which is good and bad, right? Like we, we can plant those seeds and hopefully those are the ones that, that will prosper down the road. And also we don't get to see see the fun part where where it's happening and everybody we don't it. yeah no we do we don't right but what we can do is like make sure that when we do leave we, we put it some sort of impression right some sort of like map or vague direction to that final destination right like the the full, the full understanding full-fledged um i think the last thing that i want to do is just feel like I didn't do that. I didn't contribute to helping the next generation and the next few generations figure that out. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, next question for you. Last question of the warm up is uh, okay. okay. <laughs> on the scale from one to 10, how well do you know yourself? You know, a scale of one to 10 and knowing this answer. You're right. So 7.5 is the most answered. And I thought about that. I pondered about that. Right. And I'm like, wow, that would be something I said or I say. Um, so, you know what? I'm going to be a hipster and say, you know, 6.4, 6.4. Right. Um, I think I know myself enough to, like, say, for example, like avoid certain situations, avoid certain mistakes. Right. Um, but I don't think I know myself well enough to make the right or the greatest decision possible. You know what I mean? Um, I still, you know, stay up and ponder like, well, what if I did this? What if I did that? And I don't think that's going to end until maybe later in my life where like, you know, there's, I've just laid enough bricks down my journey that I'm like, okay, you know what? This is my, this is my journey. This is my road, you know? So I'd I'd say like a little bit more than half. So 6.4, 6.4. For sure. For sure. When did that that thought of, I guess, second guessing yourself or the thought of regret, mm. you know, like, cause you know, at a certain point as a kid, you're not thinking about those things. And then all of a sudden mm. it's like, damn, I could have done better or I, I could have done more. So when would you say that start creeping in your mind as far as like, cause I feel like that's a universal thing. We, we all kind of feel that. Um, but for you, when you sure. feel like that started? Um, I think, my first like big episode of that uh was in my first career and um you know the people who i looked up to my mentors at the time they're fantastic however they didn't make great decisions themselves right and as an adolescent brain i was like 19 maybe 18 19 years old it was very impressionable and i took on a certain persona um and that persona didn't allow um certain emotions or certain you know i was very walled off and during the walling off i heard quite a few people around me um to to ensure that that wall was secured my image was secured my team's image was secured and um you know I recently, well, not recently, maybe a few years ago, I linked up with one of the persons that I, you know, kind of hurt. And um, I definitely feel that remorse. You know what I mean? That, oh man, I, I should have fought back. Like, I shouldn't have just stood there because, like, you, you, you know that feeling when you're a part of the cool group, but then when the cool group leader does something bad and you have no balls to say, like, yo, maybe that's wrong. Like, that's why that's the feeling of remorse that I hold dearly. So maybe, you know, everyone says like, you know, don't feel regret, feel remorse. Cause I don't regret not going through that because in today's time, like if I, if I see an injustice or if I see some sort of bullying or whatever, whatever it is in social circles, um, that remorse feeling goes, comes up and it's like, Oh, you, you, you're going to be a bitch again, you know, are you going to do something about it? You know what I mean? So that's definitely driven me to be way more outspoken. Um, and you know, to, to kind of create the, the, the personality that I have, or at least social personality that I have. 
Sure, man. That's some uh, that's some good awareness <laughs> of yourself. Right <laughs> yeah, I guess, yeah, yeah. Six, yeah. six point five, man. <laughs> Not six point four. But uh, oh, for sure, oh, for sure, at least, <laughs> <laughs> at least, at least. <laughs> and uh, my last follow up for that is, what would you say hmm. is your favorite thing about your personality? Your favorite. Oh, I don't think I remember this question. <laughs> I don't really remember. Um, I, I think, uh, you know, just to start off with, I'm I'm my biggest critic. So like when I when the, the question is like, uh, what do you like about yourself? Right. And I'm like, oh, I don't know if I like anything about myself fully, you know, um, but I think I the, the one thing that that the, a survival tool that I think um I've sharpened throughout the years quite well is uh, I'm quite adaptable in social situations, right? Like um, I was the, the, the nerd that went to, to like, went to Boy Scouts and hella kids picked on me, um, but I adapted to that, right? Um, I, I went to fashion. I was a fat little, you know, brown kid. I adapted to that. And um, I think my, my, the biggest tool for me is like so, number one, self-deprecation in, in like awkward situations like I, I can like lower myself down and then number two um essentially like break the uh, the ice you know what I mean like I can be the guy that is not like not harmful I don't know what it is like I'm, I'm this you know what I mean like at parties or whatever um I will try to attach myself this is something I've just been self-aware of you know in the recent years is I can attach myself to the introverts much faster than like going in the crowd and be like hey who, who, there's me you know like let me include myself into the conversation that's already on fire you know like i'm i'm very much more of like okay where where can i light a fire in 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 a situation let me go to the introverts let me have let me strike a conversation let me get deep with them right let me create this bond so then i can be a part of this ecosystem and not like try to take over it you know what I mean? I'm like the guy who waters the garden versus the guy who comes in with fire or like harvest time. You know what I mean? Um, so that's a, a tool that I can sh I sharpen all the time. And uh, to be very realistic, like I definitely use my skin color. You know, I'm an Asian. He's harmless. He's, you know, he, he's not a threat. He's non-threatening. So I use that to kind of get in. And to, I mean, I hope that my partners aren't listening to this, but like, yo, man, I've got, I've got a lot of deals. You know, I've wheeled myself into situations um, agreements, contracts that I'm not supposed to be a part of. You know what I mean? And I, I do, I definitely utilize that skill to do that. Word, man. That's your camouflage or <laughs> your choice. That's voice. my camouflage, <laughs> right. right? I'm harmless. <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I hope, I hope that was a good answer. I don't know. No, man, that was, that was great. That was great. Uh, one, one thing you had mentioned that brought up something for me was uh, recently you was talking about mm -hmm. You go to a party, you see the extroverts versus the introverts. Not not versus, yeah. but you just see how they're scattered. Right. Um, you know, for me, what I've noticed l lately is when I'm in a group or I'm at a party and I do see the extroverts as well. And it's not that, you know, I can't get down with them as much as I do with the introverts. But when I am in a group of extroverts, it... Something that I've noticed and actually brought up to another guest was that it almost feels like there's a competition or I feel like there's there's some kind of pressure of like who's going to hold the attention, who's going to tell the story and like where does it go from there? You know, like does it does the torch get passed or is one person holding the torch the whole time? Uh, just something I've noticed. Mm. And that's why I think, you know, I gravitate towards these one on one conversations more is because I can have I can give my full attention to just one person. And also, if I feel like I, I want to be heard, then I can speak and feel like I'm heard. Versus in a group where I'm a lot more closed off or a lot more silent, because I think at that point, for me, I feel like my role is just to listen. And, um, you know, if, if there's nothing for me to really add that I don't think is valuable, then I'm, I'm pretty much going to be quiet because everyone's saying everything. I, I don't like repeating, you know, the same information or like, you know, circle jerk or whatever. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Yes. So that's where I Yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, I I definitely see that in you. 
you know what I mean? Um, there's just certain people who, um, and I'm not gonna say like this is just a, like, this is a big generalization, but uh, when when I do see big groups and there's someone who's hungry for the the attention or the the limelight, uh, maybe they're not getting enough of it in in their regular life, and this is their showtime. You know what I mean? They're putting on their tapping shoes, and this is where they they get their affirmation. Um, and I, I mean, I used to do that. They 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 used to be you know they call they used to call me like preacher because like you know I'll I'll definitely get on a subject especially when i'm intoxicated and i go i go too much in, you know too introspectively and it's definitely harmed my my social credit you know and I, I i've definitely backed off on that i don't think like everyone is ready to to i don't like myself doing that you know what i mean mm. like I, it's, it's not as beneficial uh, as it was when i was a, a younger a younger kid yeah word man i think i am one of those people who, who calls you a preacher um, <laughs> dude, yeah, yeah. If I was more religious, I would definitely be a pastor for sure. <laughs> Which one's the one with the, the wife and kids? Yeah, I want that one. A, you know de- I mean? a deacon, yeah, <laughs> a deacon, yes. <laughs> but yeah, man, and, I didn't know that's you know, how you felt like, about it, man. Um, because you know, I, I say it in uh, what's it called as a term of endearment you know like oh you're a preacher mm. man but i didn't know on the other end of it for for how you felt maybe you, f- you was doing that so much that you were like i don't want to be that like and you dislike it when you when that comes out for you yeah you uh you paused i think you paused bro oh, okay okay um so i think what I've come to realize is I don't want to be like the smart guy in the room. I don't want to be perceived as that. Um, I don't want people to put me in the pedestal and I've tend to stop liking relationships where I am like the preacher, the educator, you know what I mean? Like it it just feels wrong. Um, I, I I think I used to like that thinking like that was where you wanted to land in, in a relationship. Um, but as I get older, I'm like, "Mm," you know, I feel like once, once becomes that it's just the responsibility of me to be perfect and I don't want to be perfect. You know what I mean? I want room to, to say something stupid, but then not get canceled at the same time. When you're the preacher, you know, and your son's doing naughty things and you can't stop them, then how the heck are you going to tell your, 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 um, I guess church goers to, to, to do the same. You feel me? So I, I didn't want, I don't want that pressure anymore. I, I want to be able to have room to, to make mistakes and say something that I can learn from versus like be perfect all the time. Yeah, man. Um, I think that that just marks you as like an honest person because you had asked about, you know, how does a preacher do it if his son's not you know, following it? Is I think they would lie, you know, uh, just to, Ooh, to share yeah. it and, you know, make sure everyone else follow, follows along. Uh, I'm not saying all preachers lie. I'm just saying in that. No, no, no. What the hell? Particular case. You know what I'm saying? It don't cancel but, me yet. I haven't even started. <laughs> I, no, bro. <laughs> my fault. 100 episodes, you get canceled, Jan. Uh, my bad, bro. <laughs> It's all good, man. Um, but yeah, we're moving on to the question portion of 34 questions. Yes, sir. Now, would you like to choose like lotto numbers or are you going to try out the big wheel? Um, Let's try out the big wheel. Oh, yeah. Screw it. We go into the big wheel. <laughs> going to find the way to flow that in a little bit better, but it'll get there. <laughs> All right, man. Okay, okay, okay. Going for the spin. There's all the choices are on here. One through 34, easy, medium, hard. And uh, a couple of the curveballs, if you've seen that in the in the notes. Uh, a fill in the blank or a shout out. Here goes the first okay. one. Okay. No, you can't hear anything, but uh, trust me, it's, it's making sounds. It's, it's, in, it's in my head. It's, oh, nice, easy. Let's go. 28, easy. Your first question is, <laughs> what animal would you say you are similar to? How so? Ooh. Hmm. What animal? Wow, this is the easy one, huh? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's easy. Honestly, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Maybe like. Let all me, right i'll just choose a basic one like the asian ones that i know hold um on, hold on let me let me try to yeah switch it up a little bit but 
if an okay. animal was going to represent you in a show, what animal would you choose to represent? Ooh, oh, okay. I think a misunderstood snake, like a recovering snake. Like this motherfucker was slimy as hell, but then like, you know, he had the, the arc where now he's like, oh shit, you know, um, probably, you know, I should do better or like, you know what I mean? I love, I love stories where the, or not stories, but like interactions where um, the, the surface is not what it's perceived. It gets deeper. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. For sure. Uh, <laughs> was there any, like if someone were going to ask you your favorite animal, was did you always, ha did you have a go-to at all? Did I have a go-to at all? Um, my favorite animal, it used to be a tiger, right? <laughs> and then I, I've come to realize, I was like, hey, wow, they live a lonely ass life. They don't even like, like other tigers. So I'm definitely not a tiger, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, I definitely enjoy like social aspects. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you like a you like a bee or or uh, you know? Yeah, hold on a second. I'm I'm a little laggy here. You are a little. Can you bit. can you see me? Can, I'm a little laggy, huh? I see you. And, and I don't know what's going on here. Hold on a second. Lagging. Yo, you, you was lagging a little bit. I am laggy. Oh, oh, that's a. I'm bummed. What's going on? Oh, there you go. Now you now you caught back up. Internet is. You caught back up on my Okay, end. cool. Yeah, cool yeah, beans. Yeah. No worries, man. Okay. Don't, don't get, don't make it feel like you're, you know, it's affecting your experience. It's a, uh, I hope it's not. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, oh, it's me good. too. I don't, I don't cut any of this stuff okay. too. So this is part of, part of your episode. <laughs> hey, it is what it is, bro. It is what yeah, it is, you know? Yeah. Um, okay, so. We're spinning. Finish. Was that the question? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're spinning. We're spinning, baby. I'm spinning all the way, Bob. All right. Twenty-nine medium. Moving on up. <laughs> okay. Go. What is out of your control? What is out of my control? I think. I think my my career in a sense is out of my control. I think I can only do as much as I can day to day to build it up. Um, I don't think I have like full control over like what happens, right? So I'm very much client facing. I'm, I'm a one man show. I have like one transaction coordinator, um, but it's all on me, right? Um, so I can do as much as I can. I can put it out there. I can ensure that like, um, you know, my clients like what, I, what they see, yada, yada. But at the end of the day, um, I can only do so much and I can only climb so much. And so what's going to happen to me is my career is going to end like my, my professional career, which is real estate. Um, it's going to end up where it wants to end up. Um, but I want to make sure that my life isn't dedicated to like, just making money because real estate is just money. You know what I mean? Um, I love putting people into homes. And I love those interactions, right? Like helping people. Um, I love when clients have no idea how to buy a house and I'm in there with them. I'm, I'm right there. I walk them through and we find a beautiful, you know, property that fits all their needs. Right. And I'm, I think I've come to realize I'm addicted to that feeling more than I am the money. Right. And so, so someone someone asked me it's like hey well you know what would you do if like money wasn't an issue you know like you had infinite of it what would you be doing um you you you, you know what i want to do i want to travel and then like low-key just like give money away because like stop like you can give someone a hug you can help them out a little bit but money revolves you know it, it runs the world right so no matter how much you're giving your time uh, money is always going to be super beneficial to whoever, whoever the asset is right so i'd love to be able to to just hand dough out to, to not just people in the united states but like um you know people around the world um, and i think the one tragedy that we don't talk about enough are orphans 
you know and american orphans already bad enough but like international folks i've seen them orphanages are terribly run right like they they're kind of like pushed outside of the realm of like visual society so i think that's that's going to be something that i i definitely want to do um but i don't have control of my my career i don't don't want to feel like i have control people who try to strangle hold their their career and be like okay this is what i'm going to do next 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 um usually kind of uh what do they call it foul out you know what i mean like they're, they're going to strike out it's it's um it's something that i've learned I've, it's something that i've seen in my mentors where they like kind of tear themselves up just to to get you know whatever success that it is i'm going to ride it through as long as i have money coming in um i'm, I'm going to be helping folks out i'm going to try to do uh what do they call it fulfillment like mm-hmm. waves you know what i mean i want to feel a little bit fulfilled i'm not going to be some fucking guy who gives all his money away but like just having a conversation with somebody and slipping them a 20 you know what i mean like that that i see especially in sf you know like um i i don't want to tell the story but long story short there was a we're having brunch you know homeless guy comes up you know the majority of the party ignores him he's just standing there i think he's asking for money i get up hey light the cigarette let's have a conversation over the the other side and we just chopped it up and i I think that human side of like yo i'm not treating you as like a a a charity but i'm not going to give you the fucking power to just stand over us and intimidate us and and i think that moment there gave that person a little bit of like humanity you know what i mean like you can't just be a dick but also this guy respects you sees you he's not ignoring you and then after the conversation boom just you know and i'm a little 20 and i and, and i felt good i don't give a fuck if he does drugs with the order or whatever you feel me like a lot of people are like oh just give him food it's like well i mean the food can spoil in a few days what if he's high as hell and he's not hungry you know what i mean like um those are the thoughts that i have and i think money i used to think money was everything then i thought money was nothing now i have like that balance you know what i mean like money can get other you know can get help um where you know just your effort and your time can't i got you i got you yeah man i mean yeah you made me think of some things there um oh for sure yeah yeah uh but i feel like i should save that for more of a one-on-one conversation so (laughs) (laughs) yeah 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 i know i might be getting a little deep deep on that one you know what i'm saying but no that's perfect man that's perfect i mean one of the things definitely for me that came up was uh you you were talking about being out of control with your career and how you've seen a different side to it where the people who who have it planned out and who have it like you know this is what i'm trying to go for you know they can kind of either choke it or lose it um so yeah Yeah. for for me it kind of made me feel like oh oh finally maybe i feel like i'm doing something right (laughs) uh, you know just where my career is in in the grand scheme of things but um yeah <laughs> i know you're lagging right now so it, it was kind of Yo, weird. Jan, are you am i back yeah yeah i can hear you i can hear you but yeah, well man. you know i i definitely wanted uh that mistake that was on purpose so then jan can put in his sponsors you know today's sponsor is uh manscape you know if you <laughs> feeling a little down if uh you feeling like your groove is off your vibe is off you know what i'm saying get them snippers go into your tub you know, give a little little fade down there. You know what I'm saying? You're feeling ready. You're ready to go. So, uh, yeah, manscaped.com. <laughs> oh, yeah. And uh, you know, if, you, if you're having any trouble with your energy in the bedroom, um, you should use my code for Blue Chew. <laughs> Blue Chew, uh, you know. <laughs> what do they call it? Uh, run that choo-choo train through your, your girl. You know what I'm saying? Get her, get her that Amtrak ticket. You know what I'm saying? The annual ticket with BlueChew.com. You know? <laughs> Shout out Flagrant 2 for, uh, for the show. Shout out Flagrant 2 for that one. <laughs> No yo, you, you watch Flagrant too? That yo, man, that's that's one of my favorite like group of guys. They they just have great conversation, dude. Yeah, man. Mm. Um, yeah, honestly, like I just enjoy them being themselves. If I don't know if they are doing characters, but if they are, I, I can't tell. And I guess that that makes it even better for them. Um, they just got that chemistry and flow. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I think like 90%, th- th- those are not characters. Like, I think 90%, you know what I mean? They got to play a little bit to the camera. 
yeah yeah a little when when they do their sponsorships i'm sure but or or maybe that's really them because they're having so much fun with it i, I don't know but if I, I think one of the rules is not to read like everything and and that what a, what a fantastic i think content creators like yourself i think the a notch on to tell to to kind of let you know that you're in control of your media and you're in control of your your life is when sponsors say you know you don't have to do this readout do it in your own style you feel me coming from advertising like copywriting is everything a certain word changed is like totally different meaning so when you're when your client says forget about it just do it yourself because we trust you like that that's huge yeah. i think that you've, you've lightly made it you know if, if you if you can get to that stage no for sure for sure i I would love to get to that point where I don't feel like I'm, I'm I'm a robot voice, you know, for somebody else. Right. Oh. Yeah. But uh, yeah, man. Or the pre-reads. Pre um, I, I I don't know if I told you that Shave My Balls reached out to me to to do the thing, but <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's one of those things where it's like uh, you know, they got a bot sending all these invites to do it. Uh, it was just funny to, to read shave my balls reaching out and saying hey could you wow hella funny but <laughs> obviously i didn't do it because i don't have a code and yeah i mean find, google google how to shave your balls i'm sure you, you'll find a way to do it for free <laughs> or a low cost oh my God. <laughs> so, anyways man let's jump back into the podcast we have only okay. about 10 15 minutes left just a heads up Okay, uh, but I wanted to cool. thank you again for for stopping by, uh, you know, being a part of the definitely helping, man. helping me build this thing, man. Definitely appreciate it. Uh, here we go. Twenty three easy. Let's go. The wheel loves me, man. Let's yeah, go. Man. The easy ones. <laughs> uh, twenty three easy is. What does unconditional love look like for you? Um, I think, I think I'm definitely manic. Like once you get to know me, like I, I have fantastic days and then I have days where like, uh, you know, I doubt everything. I, I don't know if any of the shit that I've built up is worth it. You know what I mean? Like it, it's very, I, I don't want to connect it to like the artistic self optimizing personality or whatever but i think unconditional love would be like okay a person who who can definitely handle that i don't want to say handle but like understand like oh shit okay he's going through that um you know you got to take it on the best days and the good days like that's i, I think that's what unconditional love would be for me it's it's like look dude like I don't care if I do the dishes, I cook, I clean. It doesn't matter. Like the, the, the what do they call it? The, the postmodern expectations of, of, of sexes or whatever. Um, I think it's more of like, can you handle uh, when I'm introspective and I want to have a conversation about like what's going on with France, what's going on in Cuba, what's going on in, in um, Haiti right now. But then at the same time, it's like, yo, it's Saturday. Um, the homies are going out. Are you down to party? You know, like, are, are you, you, you know what I mean? So it's like the waves of me are inconsistent. And I, I see it even in my parents. Um, I see it in my like heritage on both families. So it's not going to be a phase. So I think unconditional love will, will see it as like, okay, Han's going through this. Uh, I'm going to support him. And, you know, he's not going to be wild, but like, I'm not going to like put it on him like oh yo remember that bad day that you had or like remember you know you know what i mean more more of like the forgiving like oh okay he's just on he's just on one of the one of his episodes you know what i mean um and i don't have those a lot but when i do i feel like uh the unconditional love needs to be there yeah for sure man for sure uh you know you was talking about having having these episodes or you feel like you notice a shift in yourself when the good days and bad days you think yeah. it's it's more more to the average like person or more more than the average person having having shifts or you know these episodes um 
to be honest with you as as the years went by it's gotten a lot better um i you know I don't, I don't have them as frequently and i think it's because i've removed myself away from environments that put me into those episodes um whether it's like going against my morals or making me um go against like my non-negotiables you know what i mean um the more that I remove myself away from those people, those environments, I've gotten way less episodes on that. You know what I mean? Like whether my boss, like I, I have, I have bosses right now. I have mentors right now. Um, and you know, they understand they, they have unconditional love for me. And I think that's what I, I appreciate why, like I'm so loyal to them. Um, but yeah, so I think nowadays I, I it's way less um, and I can control them and I if I wake up and, and it is mildly p- part of like depression and like the uncertainties like you know how um, because we're in the social media realm where the information world you know knowledge world we feel like we have to keep up with everything um, and sometimes I do have days like that where I'm like dude I need to catch up well what the heck is going on over here blah 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 this connects to my business it connects to, to my personal life this is what I'm investing in the future and then I'll have an episode where I'm like, dude, I I can't control any of this. Um, you know, this sucks. What if my moves are bad? And nowadays, I kind of remove myself away from that. I've become a zoo goer versus a zoo attendant. You know what I mean? I don't feel like I need to clean up after this shit. I don't feel like I need to put the energy in to make sure the whales are happy, the, the elephants are happy. Like, I'm just a zoo goer now. Like, whenever I enter, like, information world, you know? Like, wh- whenever I visit social media, I don't feel like, oh, I gotta, I gotta voice my concern. I gotta show, you know, I gotta, I gotta save the world. I, I, I don't do that anymore. I'm more of a visitor. And, you know, just because you're a zoo girl, I'm not chomping on popcorns and corn dogs right i'm, I'm kind of understanding what's going on are, are the lions happy or is everyone happy and then what can i do personally to benefit from it whether it's like you know uh to to get informed about both sides so when i do have a conversation on the topic outside of the zoo i'm gonna be like hey you know what? actually the lions need more space mm-hmm. you know but at the same time if we take away from the penguin space they're not going to be able to breed. You know what I mean? So like, I'm going to be able to have that well-rounded conversation um, about social topics, about what's going on in the world without feeling like, oh my God, I need to be a part of the solution. You, you feel me? Yeah. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Uh, it it kind of just made me think about like, what am I doing in the zoo? And uh, right now, I feel, <laughs> I feel like I'm, I'm the dude holding the microphone and, and bringing it up to people's faces. <laughs> So that's where I'm at. So how, how do you like the zoo? I mean, you know, <laughs> is, is the expansion great? Have you guys seen it? Like, how does how does the zoo make you feel? <laughs> like, yeah. How does it make you feel today? You know. <laughs> so man, all right, there we go. There um, it is. Uh, I like I said, all this stuff is pretty new. Uh, still getting used yeah. to pushing buttons, and but I like it. I like sh- this is the candid part of it. But we made it to the final stretch of 30 let's go question. um got some close out questions for you but before we do that there's this new thing called the 34th mantra i think you've seen that in the notes but uh it's mm. a mantra that i would like guests to create on the show um, and all you have to do is fill in the phrases which are i am i can i will so i am blank i can blank I will blank. How would you fill that in for yourself? Okay. Um, okay. So first one is I am, right? I am content. That's that's one thing that I've been meditating on so I don't get like bum brushed into like the, the rat race of making money and like comparison, right? The more time that I spend in SoCal, the more I'm like, oh shit, where's my Tazzy? You know, where's, where's this? Where's that? And so I've been working, if I'm going to operate in that world and be closer to my parents and you know kind of um be comfortable in southern california i need to to remind myself that i am content you know like i i am okay i'm I'm, i don't need more but like i can live with less so it's it's fine so okay that's i am (laughs) what's the next one i can i can oh okay uh 
I can be better. Mm. You know what? Yeah. What, what, whether it's like relationships or my work or how I interact with the world, right? I can always be a little bit better. Um, whether it's kinder, um, more understanding, or even more ruthless to, to, to protect the people who I love. You know, I can be better. And the last one for you, man, is I will blank. I will. That's a that's a promise, right? Like that's a thing that. Hmm. Uh, I will survive. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no man you know that is that is a promise right to, to yourself yeah uh, yeah i will survive well, isn't that a song that's a song that's a aretha franklin song or something it is a I song forgot. i'm yeah, not yeah, very I musically inclined survive. yeah 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 um no nah, man i mean i mean if it fits you it fits you and uh if that's the truth for you that's the truth now you have a uh, this little sound bite of yourself you know, uh, if you ever need to be reminded that you are content, uh, you can do better and you will survive, man. So for sure. Appreciate that. No worries, man. And then we're moving on to the the final questions. This first one is okay. from my previous guest. Uh, shout out to Jeffrey Breedwell for your question. This was kind of heavy, man. Um, and, you know, you don't have to, like, be super specific. But if you can share about a time this came up for you. This, okay. This question is, who is the one person in your life that is the most difficult to forgive? I know, right? <laughs> That's a hard question. <laughs> to forgive... To, to be honest with you, uh, I'm not going to be able to answer that because, you know, I came to this country and I only know this country. Like Vietnam is just such a, a vacation spot for me. I have no connection to it. I have huge family over there, but I only have my parents and my parents are the only people who um, I truly give a fuck about. I like what they say, what they think, what they think of me. And I can always forgive them. You know, like in, in the past, my parents have definitely had beef with me. There's a huge reason why I moved up here. Right. Um, and I've forgiven them and I've seen the growth of, of especially my dad. You know, my dad was like very much tiger dad. It is what it is. Like it's my way or the highway type type of deal. But 10 years has passed, 11 years has passed. And, um, you know, the harsh things he said, what he believed, what he wanted for me, um, he's definitely softened up. And I, I don't think I've for, like, I need to forgive him, but I'm glad that I never was like, this is over, you know, you know what I mean? Like, I can never forgive you. Um, I think even past girlfriends, like what they've done, things like that, like I, I've forgiven them all. Cause it's like, dude, you're, you, w whether you're young, you're, you had a different mindset. Um, I think all, also my spirituality and my religion doesn't allow me to like not forgive somebody. You know what I mean? I can avoid them, but I'm not gonna like blame them for doing that to me, especially in business too. You know, like I think in business, um, people definitely screwed me over taking the, not taking the money, but the taking, you know, taking advantage of me. Um, but at the end of the day, how, how do, how does this someone move on and how, how do you like not have that failure or that, um, betrayal to find you is you move on. You try to understand why they did it. Well, Hey, he, he had a new kid coming. Um, he had different goals, you know, hardships in his life. Sure. He can screw me over. I'm well, that's fine. Like I, I understand it. I need to move on. Like, being unforgivable i don't think anyone's ever done anything that's unforgivable joe man um uh, thank you for for sharing that yeah th this question is pretty bananas <laughs> uh <laughs> when i was talking about sure. it with jeffrey he was like you know they might want to pass but uh yeah even, even like you said um uh, i you know for... bitch <laughs> come on give me your hardest question right now <laughs> Oh um, I'd have to think about that. If I had to rank my questions, like you know, mm -hmm. like for for me, what I'd have to think about that one. Um, but for sure, man. My my second to last question for you is: What would you like to ask the next person that comes on to Thirty Four Questions? Uh, let's see. Oh no! You you paused yeah. again. Oh, there you go. Am I there? You're there. You're there. 
Okay, cool. Uh, I definitely didn't say anything well, <laughs> so we're good there, you know. Uh, I would say, you know, what? what is your take on how society should be in the future? What's, what's one positive thing that you would like to see grow from today's time and see it as like a standard in the future? And I'll give you an example. It's like um, gay marriage. That's fucking normal as hell now, right? Like uh, talking about like depression and, and, and spirituality, that's normal now. I just went to a party and they did a sage cleansing before we, we partied, you know? And I, I, I was like, oh shit, that's hella tight, you know? So... 10 years ago, if I did that, I'm like, oh, you some hippie, you know, boo-boo stuff. But now everyone's like, okay, for sure. No drinking before this age. You know what I mean? So I like that. I, I quite quite like that. So what what is what is something uh, that that is, you know, emerging now that you would want to see normalized in the future? Yo, that's pretty woke, man. Damn, doing the sage right now. Woke. <laughs> <laughs> I know the sage cleansing. Uh, makes me feel better, though. It's- yeah. Dude, I, like now, I feel like I should be that person. Next time I'm at a, I'm at a party, I'm gonna bring some sage and be like, "Hold up, we gotta do." Hold this. up, just hey, you know, could be the greatest night ever if we, like, dude. Yeah, I don't know. If it's not spiritually, it's a, a fucking awesome placebo. You know, it means everyone chiller. You know what I'm saying? Like everyone understands, like, yo, man, it's good vibes only. So you know, That's even if they have bad vibes, they don't want to bring it up. You know? Yeah, yeah, I got gotcha. you. And then my last question for you, man, the question that ties everything together, 500 years from now, our descendants are watching this video. What would you like to tell them? Number one, I hope that the internet connection is better. Uh, (laughs) uh, And number two, like tell, tell them, I mean, you know, be be both aware of the ultimate timeline you know the three thousand feet above watch watch how you affect your environment your society your your social economic like like power but also be present at the same time you know um smile at people uh, uh be introspective don't don't allow yourself to live throughout a day without like checking up on somebody I, I i i'm that's what i'm trying to do now you know what i mean just check up on your friend be like yo what's good what you what are you doing this weekend or like hey um you know you told me about that job interview a couple of weeks ago how'd that go you feel me make sure that you are weaving yourself and your your being into more of the universe don't just hold it to yourself um, I think that's how we're going to be significant. And then that, and if it's going to be for my descendants, uh, the one thing that like has changed my life was uh, I had a professor in community college. She was a wild, she was a wild girl. And the last thing that she said to us was when you're in your deathbed, what do you want to be known as successful or, or significant? Right. And you, I want to let everybody know my, all my descendants knows I want to be significant. Okay, I don't want to die with a bunch of money that I can't take with me, but I want to die with a bunch of memories and other people living in other people's heads and then influencing them after I pass. Michelle, man, and uh, I think I think you're well on your way if you're not already doing that. So. Hey. <laughs> uh, any last things you want to add before we head out of here? Um, let's see. I think, Jen, uh, I think this is a fantastic journey for you. I think uh, as you get better with not just like the physical tools, like getting the the visuals up, the graphics up, um, I think there is something in this, I guess, I don't want to call it a bit, uh, but it definitely truly is, uh, you know, something that is going to be valuable. I hope that you do find some, some, some way to monetize it, whether it's like clean your, shave your balls or whatever. Like, I, I hope that um, you get that steam picked up because uh, your energy is not meant to work at an office or say yes sir or you you feel me and i think society at this time should allow more opportunities for people like you to to make a living not feel like you you need to be a part of the system to to breathe so i i hope that this is going to be like um you know a pathway for you yeah for sure man and you know I, i'm believing it a little more and more and every day it's uh you know you, you know my journey through jobs and and like what what is it important to me to to do in in when i'm not doing this 
this is yeah. de definitely just filling up every, checking off every box for me as far as spiritual you know working something that's challenging um yeah all, all that stuff it this is pretty dope for me man um and as long as people are willing to to come on answer these questions share their story i'll be here uh doing it and hopefully one day you know someone's gonna be like hey you know we'll give you money to do this so <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> that's all I'm you, for. yeah you, you you need to just put yourself out there bro um yeah. you know and yeah like i said too uh you know i i come i come from like a business-minded background and i love creatives and i think that the final downfall for any creative is how to not i'm sorry not not to learn how to monetize your work right the, the world does run around money don't allow any hippie any woke children to tell you otherwise right like you need to have a, a relationship with money you don't need to lust after it um for any listener here right like don't lust after money use it as a partner right so and, and i think creatives who understand that relationship definitely make it so i hope that you you definitely are one of them i'm learning man learning the hard way but uh at least i'm learning and uh yeah, yeah. I want to thank you again, Han, for stopping by. Hopefully, it's your first episode. Hopefully, not your last. Um, I want to thank all the folks out there who tuned in. If you're listening on Spotify, Apple Music, or catching this on YouTube, thank you as well. If you liked it, go like it. If you loved it, please subscribe and share. Um, remember to reach out, reach forward. As always, much love. And we'll catch you guys next time on 34 Questions. Peace. And then... Uh, <laughs> There you go, man. That was it. Ah, um, oh, sick. <laughs> that so, was dope. I wish my internet was better, man. I don't know what's going on. I, I look like I'm fucking running off of potato Wi-Fi. <laughs> it's all um, good. It's all good. But yeah, man. Um, I know you kind of gave me feedback already, but anything that stood out to you, anything that you know you felt felt like could be improved on, shoot, go ahead, shoot. Um. I think we're, we're comfortable enough to like bounce back and forth. Right. Um, I think the transitions could, could be a little bit better. You know what I mean? Not like fit, like visual transitions, but like, uh, I don't know, like, I guess when we say, okay, well next, next question. Right. Um, maybe like insert a little bit more of like, Hey, so on, on that top, you know, on that point or on that matter or on that, like, I guess, I don't know how to say it. Like on that note, you know, let's, let's, let's start, you know, let's, let's go to another question, blah, blah, blah. I think, um, getting the guests ready for the next question with what you, I love your responses, bro. I love them. Right. How do you, how do you end your responses with a smooth transition to the next question? That that's my, my only critique, everything else fucking phenomenal right i love the back and forth i love that you are listening actually and not just like okay next question you know what i mean like the, the feedback off of the the, pe the people's answers um that's awesome.